Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our Let's Make Art Matter postcard for our September Let's Make Art History Volume 3 watercolor box. Ooh. <laughs> I don't have a project to show you because this is where I take an opportunity for us to approach a painting together and you guys can see my thought process and I try not to paint or do anything beforehand so then you can actually see how it goes. Um, we have Michael here working the cameras. Well, hello. And you might notice that we are in a new space. We've moved offices and filming studios and art studios, and it's been a little bit crazy, but it might be a little echoey in here and we will work on that. So we just wanted to acknowledge that you might hear a little change, but we'll, we'll improve on it. Okay. So if you're not familiar with our Let's Make Art Matter program, what we do is inside of our monthly release boxes, we have a watercolor postcard that is pre-stamped and usually pre-addressed. And we all, um, whoever gets this box can paint on the postcard and then we send it to the same recipient. And they get essentially this big art hug every single month. And so um, this month, our postcard is going to Bev and Kirk. And they are the parents of Evan. Um, who unfortunately passed away in a hiking accident. And um, I am I, I had the opportunity to meet Evan's aunt, and she was the one who um, nominated Evan and um, talked to me about him. And um, so I just wanted to, to thank Jill for um, being willing to share um, Evan and their family with us so we can paint something for him. So... For um, Evan, he was an avid reader, dog, uh, dog lover, and music enthusiast. He was also a photographer. And actually what we're gonna paint today is one of the photos he took while he was in New Zealand. Um, so before I get started, one thing that I wanted to say is that when I talked to Jill about Evan and her nomination, all this stuff, she wanted to make it clear that she wants the postcards to be a celebration of Evan's life. And so if we can send, um, this postcard to his family, um, letting them know that we're thinking about them and we are celebrating Evan, um, then I think that that will be meaningful. So I hope you guys take the time to do this. Okay, so for the supplies that I have, I have my four go-to brushes ready to go. Um, our bonus items for this month are two Neo colors. We have orange and turquoise. I have a pencil so I can sketch, and then the pink colors just on my palette. I'm not sure what I'm using yet. So basically just have your supplies from the month's box out ready to go. I already taped down my postcard and let me show you what we are going to attempt to paint. <laughs> so look at this beautiful photo. Wow. Yeah, and this was in New Zealand. So we are going to try and recreate this. And again, I haven't done this before, so we're kind of just Figuring this out together. You sure that's not a picture of Missouri? <laughs> it has that Missouri feel, right? Yeah, the oceanfront Missouri vibes. Tropical. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to take my pencil and just kind of lightly sketch out where I want things to go. Now, remember, sketching is just making marks on a paper. No stress, no big deal. It doesn't have to be exact. Usually I just like to look at proportions and dimensions. So if I'm looking at this, my horizon line is two thirds of the way down on my paper. Okay, so I'm gonna roughly go two thirds down and put that in. And then it looks like this land foliage, rocky stuff here goes not quite halfway. And so let's just put it in. So see, I'm just kind of doing an uneven line here. Do I need to draw darker so they could see that? It probably wouldn't hurt. There we go. Okay. If you're doing this at home, don't draw so dark. Yeah, try and draw more light at home because watercolor is transparent, so dark pencil marks, you will be able to see through your watercolors, which isn't bad, but... Okay. And then the foliage itself, it doesn't... See how there's not a straight line? Like, the horizon line is straight. This land outcropping here is not straight. It kind of curves up and goes back in. So it's gonna be something like that. And there's some rocks. And I'm not gonna to be too particular about the rocks. Just a little bit. The clouds, I'm just gonna do um, like a color wash. I'm not gonna to stress too much about that. And then there's this gorgeous highlight right here where that sun is hitting the top of these trees. 
that I'm just gonna keep in mind as I paint my colors. So this is my general drawing for this. It's okay if yours looks different. It's supposed to look different. You're the one that drew it. Okay, and then now I'm gonna look at this photograph and say, how can I approach this painting? So whenever I do landscapes, I usually always do the sky first, and you always wanna work back to front. So the sky is the what I'm gonna do first, and then I think I'm gonna do my water next, even though technically the water is closest to me. I, the reason why I wanna do my water first is because the this landmass is on top of the water, and so I want to paint the water and then be able to overlap those lines using these rocks and these trees and stuff like that. So I wanna paint that at the end, and then we would do the details in the water very last. So you kinda of see how you have to think about layers. Okay, now when it comes to the sky, it kind of starts like, has like this very soft yellow, with these like purple blue clouds around here. Now, um, I'm gonna do more swooping loose clouds um, just to make it a little bit easier on myself to paint this. Um, so let's mix some colors. So I have lemon yellow. I'm gonna take some of that to the center. I'm gonna grab a tiny bit of red and mix that in there just to give my yellow some warmth. So it's not like a neon in your face yellow. You know what I mean? We want it like a soft golden yellow. Sunsetty. A sunsetty. Okay. And then we have space blue here. And I'm gonna see what happens when I mix space blue and my red. Kind of get like a desaturated purple. I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit of a brighter purple with my sea blue. So as you can see here, <clears throat> and this is just how I like play around with mixing colors. There's like a really pastel-y purple in this palette, but I can't mix that using the colors that I have here. So instead of saying, okay, I'll just use whatever purple is here, <clears throat> I'm just gonna adjust and I'm gonna say, okay, I just don't have the color options to mix that pink purpley color. So then I'm just going to adjust and I'm gonna lean more towards like a blue orange soft sunset instead of a like pink. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, if you have the pink colors to mix more of like a brighter purple, feel free to. And then what I can do is I can take my red and add water to it and that is going to make a pink. So I can still have pink in there, I just can't have like a good purple. Does that make sense? All right, now let's go ahead and put this color in. So I'm going to take, start by taking this warm yellow that I mixed. I'm gonna start right above the horizon line to put that in. And I can overlap into my rocky area. I'm gonna do one more swoop just to make it nice and warm. And then I'm gonna use just water to bring that color up to where it's like barely there. And let's take some of this pink and just kind of swoop in this pink. Okay. You're forgetting the most important part. What? Whoosh. Whoosh. Oh, whoosh, there whoosh. it is. And now I'm going to grab a little bit of this space blue and add some water to it mixture. So it's kind of more blue at the top and then mixes to like a pink. And then if you want to do like a swoop, like hints of clouds, just swooping in, go for it. I'm going to mix a little bit more yellow orange to do some more swoops down here. I know it's part of the process, but it stresses me out that you paint past the line. Oh, past my taped edge? No, 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 or this? that line, yeah. Yeah, I know it's stressful, but that's what you want. You want to make sure that you don't leave any white gaps in between the sections. And then the very last thing is I'm just gonna do one more hit of just kind of like a orangey yellow right at the base here. Okay, ooh. Ooh, okay, now I wanna do a little bit more pink too. So as you can see, our first layer has dried, like our first color wash has mostly dried. And as your watercolor kind of dries, 
it's going to lighten in color and value. And so sometimes after you do your initial layer, you're like, okay, that's good. Or you're like, you know what? I'm actually gonna go back and add just a little bit more. So it's up to you how strong you want your colors to be. Okay, I'm getting close to the area where I'm like, stop messing with it. One more. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, now what we are going to do is we are going to do our water. So if I look, now I totally changed the sky, right? Like this one is reading very like soft pastel purple. This one I went more with like yellows, reds, and oranges. But we have to then think about how our sky informs the water. And because we changed the colors, how does that now change our painting? You should, so, have, you should hold that phone a little more flat. There we oh, go. Oh, there we go. So with my water here, you can see that this kind of purpley color is actually right here in that water. The rest is kind of like different values of blue, but I feel like water is reflected of whatever's happening in the sky. So then if I don't have that purpley color happening in my sky, then I have to think about what color is happening here that I need to put in my water, okay? Now you should hold it over your painting so we can see it up close. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. There we go. Now I see what So you're you see that purple here? Yes, beautiful. So we just have to think, okay, where is that gonna go? I also want to note for you listeners that I'm very happy to announce our new space still comes with the sound of giant trucks outside. <laughs> so you'll feel comfortable just like the old space. Honestly, you're getting the real Hamilton experience because you can't be in this town without these huge semi trucks just driving through mm -hmm, all day. Mm -hmm. Authentic experience. It, it is. Just giving you a taste of small town life. <laughs> So before we put our paint color down for our water, I wanna look at where the darkest values are. So if I halfway squint my eyes, I can see that the darkest value is back near the horizon line, and then it kind of lightens in value as it works its way forward, with exception to kind of like some little wave lines here. So knowing that, I'm gonna take the sea blue and I'm gonna mix a little bit of space blue in there, and you can go over your rocks because your rocks are dark. And I'm just gonna start doing horizontal brush strokes using my round six. And then I'm just gonna grab water as I work my way down. And then I'm thinking about, okay, what color do I need to put in here for my sky to like reflect my sky? So when I get into this area, Let's do a little bit of this like orangey pink color. Now we don't want to mix too much, but just so you know, it's going to be a little bit muddy because we're layering yellow and orange and pink on top of blue, but that's okay. Cause we're just trying to give the hint that the sky is reflecting nothing too detailed or crazy here. Maybe one more. Oh yeah, oh I like that. Just like a little touch of that light hitting. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna check and make sure my horizon line is actually straight. I think it dips to the left a little bit. And sometimes while it's wet, I'll go in and kind of just do horizontal strokes just to, and let those diffuse out because then I'll give the illusion of like movement in the water. Okay, there we go. And then now what we are going to do is we are going to mix all the colors together to get a dark value. And also we want to mix green. So let's take my lemon yellow and sea blue. See what kind of green we get. So that's a pretty vibrant green. Let's see what happens when I do lemon yellow and space blue. Ooh, that's a deeper green. Okay, I like both of those. Usually I like to mix a couple greens on my palette as I'm going to pull from. And now we are going to mix all colors to see if we can get kind of like a brownish black. Which we do. Perfect. 
All right. And now I'm going to make sure it's dry. And I'm going to start putting in my ground and foliage. Let's look at this picture one more time. So you guys can be as detailed or loose as you want. You can actually turn this whole thing into brown rocky if you want. I'm going to do the bottom half as this kind of rocky area and then turn it to green because I do want this kind of gold green highlight right here. So, taking my round six, I'm gonna follow just the base of that. And then about here is where I will start putting in green. Now you'll notice if you look at the green area, the top part, there's like underneath the green right here is shadowed. That's because there's like three dimensional things coming out and rounding out. So I'm gonna do this kind of like brighter green along the top. And then when I get down to the brown, Let's mix a darker green and kind of like do round kind of swoops underneath here to give it some dimension. And we can also do it kind of throughout a little bit too. And I like to do like this is where I'll switch to my round two and kind of going along the edges here just do smaller brush strokes going past the line that you drew just to give that feel of like foliage and activity. Okay, and I'm gonna do one more layer here. So because I was working wet on wet, you can see that like the green is blending into the brown or the brown is blending into the green. I'm okay with that. I want this to be a little bit loose, a little bit active, and I'm letting a lot of the, the paint and the watercolor do the work for me. So I'm just gonna drop one more kind of layer right underneath here using that dark brown. I'm just kind of letting that move and we'll just see where it goes, okay? Then I can take that same dark brown and start putting in some rocks. So as long as your ground is dry. And again, we're not going for a lot of detail here. Just remember that as things get farther away from us and recede in space, they get smaller. So your rocks are gonna get a little bit smaller as they work their way out and the ones that are closest to us are gonna be the biggest ones. Okay. Okay, that's feeling pretty good. It's beautiful. And now what we can do is, if you want, we can use our Neo colors. So right when I saw that highlight on that foliage, I thought, oh, that's perfect. I have a green, I mean, I have a orange Neo color here that can really, that can really get that highlight for us. See that? Mm -hmm. So, let's try it. Cool. And you can work it into the green a little bit if you want. The sky should be dry, so you can do a little bit of both. So it's just this bright highlight right at the top. And then if you like the Neo Color texture and what that's doing, if you wanna put that a little bit in your sky, you can. Maybe even a little bit in the water. And then I also have this turquoise one. So let's see what happens when I add some texture lines here. Now, because my value is darker in the back of my water, that doesn't really come up like it doesn't show up when I go over here, but when I do it in the foreground where my value is lighter, it shows up. Okay. 
Okay. Love it. Maybe if you want to do a couple in the sky too. Now, the nice thing about Neo colors is they do blend out with water. So if you like do a mark and you're like, oh, I don't really like that, well, blend it out. And then I'm just going to see, I just had this idea like, what if I blended out some of this yellow orange? Take this yellow too. If you want to drop a little bit more medium values into this foliage, you can. Just like that. And then the very last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this space blue and my round two. And I'm just going to do thin, long horizontal marks for the waves. And if you want to like kind of ground these rocks and do a little shadow underneath them. You can. Just kind of giving the, the feeling of that lip of that water coming up just a little bit. Okay, I think we're done. It's beautiful. I hope that um, you guys take the time to do this and you send a little, um, you know, birthday uh, card and art hug to Bev and Kurt um, in honor of Evan. And we so appreciate his talents and his skills and um, that we could use this photo as our reference to paint. Um, there actually is a little bit of a poem I wanted to share that, um, was said, um, that his aunt shared with me and I thought it was beautiful. So I'm just going to take a minute to read it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, it's called a little while. I'll lend you for a while, a child of mine. He said for you to love the while he lives and mourn for when he's dead. It may be six or seven years or 22 or three, but will you, till I call him back, take care of him for me? He'll bring his charms to gladden you and should his stay be brief, you'll have his lovely memories as a solace for your grief. Solace or solace? I cannot promise he will stay since all from earth return, but there are lessons taught down there I want this child to learn. I've looked the wide world over in my search for teachers true, and from the throngs that crowd life lanes I have chosen you. Now will you give him all your love, not think the labor vain, nor hate me when I come to call to take him back again? I fancy that I heard them say, dear Lord, thy will be done for all the joy thy child shall bring the risk of the risk of grief we run. We'll shelter him with tenderness. We'll love him while we may. And for the happiness we've known forever grateful stay. But should the angels call for him much sooner than we've planned, we'll brave the bitter grief that comes and try to understand. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to get so emotional during that. Um... But I thought that was beautiful because in this life, we all experience grief. There's no way to go through it without it. And we've all experienced loss. And I think just recognizing that that's part of it. That's part of loving is that grief. And I think that when it comes to let's make art matter and what we're trying to do, while we cannot... eliminate grief or pain, we can sit people with, we can sit with people in it and we can send our love and support and just let them know they're not alone. Um, I mean, that, that is why we started Let's Make Art Matter was just a way for us to paint something, to let someone know that we're thinking about them and we are. And so Bev and Kirk, we are, um, thinking about 
Evan and celebrating his life that he had here. Uh, we really hope you appreciate these postcards. Again, uh, sending all my love to their family and also thank you to Jill for sharing this story with us. And I hope that you guys take the time to paint this card. Um, and thank you so much for taking the time to even just paint something for someone else. Um, it really does mean a lot. So I think that's it. Okay, bye. <laughs>